Hi, Shannon Waller here, and welcome to the Team Success Podcast. I'm excited because there is a tool that we've been using in Strategic Coach for the last quarter in Dan Sullivan's workshops, and there's a part of the tool that I got very excited to share with you, and it's called What Drives Me Crazy. And I thought this would be particularly appropriate for our Team Success Podcast because as team members, as team leaders, as entrepreneurs, we all have certain types of things that drive us crazy with regard regard to teamwork. Now, the challenge is we don't often communicate them. And when people find out that they've driven us crazy, it's after the fact. We go from being a nice, calm, orderly individual to going, you know, and you just want to take someone's head off. And they're like, "Uh, what happened? And they actually don't know. They just run away. And one of the things I love about entrepreneurs is that their emotions tend to be fairly clear, happy or otherwise. But it also means that people need to have the ability to handle strong emotions their own and other people's strong emotions. So it's sometimes a little intimidating. Let me put it that way. So the Drives Me Crazy came out of this really interesting tool called the 4x4. And if you want to learn more about that, check out our podcast with Dan on Inside Strategic Coach. That's where the whole picture is given. But I want to talk about this Drives Me Crazy part because oftentimes in our job descriptions or working with people, we're very clear about what we want them to do. You know, here's how I want you to take action. You know, in the 4x4, it's here's the type of performance I want you to do. I want you to be alert, curious, responsive, resourceful. The results I'm looking for, faster, easier, cheaper, better. Here's how you can be a hero to me and you lay out the projects and the wins that you want them to do. But the part that we often do not communicate are those things that really drive us bananas, that get us upset, that start to doubt the person's capabilities, that undermine our belief in other people and make us think really nasty thoughts about them. And this is also where we take things personally. So we're like, oh, they're out to get me, or oh, they're really not for what we're up to in the company, or I'm not sure how much longer they'll be here if they keep doing that. We can be perfectly rational two seconds before, but something happens, and then bam, we are in the worst case scenario. We've got them half out the door. And this happens more than we are willing to admit sometimes. So there is something really valuable about understanding what drives you crazy. And I'm going to suggest, even if you have different job descriptions for every single person that you work with, that what drives you crazy is probably the same for each of them. So this is a static thing. It's very personal to you about the things within teamwork that drive you crazy. And again, I don't care what role you have in the company. I think all of us have things that drive us crazy. So I want to share with you what Dan's are because he's very articulate about them. Then there's a key point here about communication that I think is, again, just a real big takeaway for everyone to know. So I'll leave that for the end. So some examples of things that drive Dan crazy, at least, are what he calls black holes. So this is when things just go into the abyss, you know, not knowing what happens, things fall through the cracks, and there's no feedback about them. That's a black hole. It gets sucked into a gravitational pull, never to see the light of day. And so that's not cool. The second one is being kept in the dark. So kept in the dark means never knowing what the status of something is, not knowing if things are on track or off track. And that's really frustrating. And this is where this key point comes in. And Dan makes a great point. He says, no information is information. I've heard team members say this, and it drives me batty. (laughs) This is one of the things that drives me crazy, too. Like, well, how's this going? You know, we're looking for some information from a particular vendor or a particular client. It's like, well, I called and left a message. Well, you didn't get the answer. Who else did you call? Did you do anything else? And it's almost like this passive or what is perceived as passive-aggressive response to things, where they've done something, they've taken action, and they've checked the box, but really they have not gotten the results. And Dan's like, I can come up with alternative. I can come up with other things we can try, other approaches to get that result. So being kept in the dark, particularly when things are not happening, is incredibly frustrating for him. And this is, if you want to see... (laughs) the not happy Dan come out. It's when people keep him in the dark about things. Then he gets incredibly clear about how you need to keep him apprised of what's going on. So the third thing is bottlenecks. And bottlenecks are where things are getting held up in the system. This is where often a person or there's a crunch of too many projects and the priorities are not being sorted or allocated appropriately. And this is really, really frustrating. And again, Dan, me, others are quite good at coming up with alternative solutions, but if don't know about it, then we can't help solve the bottleneck solution. 
And the last one is one of my personal favorites called backstage itis. So if you've heard me talk about front stage and backstage, it's just one of the great analogies that Dan uses to do, really applies the whole entertainment industry model to business, which is perfect. It's so applicable where, you know, you have this front stage result that you're looking at producing, but all people are talking about is the backstage and the backstage priorities overshadow the front stage results. That is another thing that will drive Dan crazy. And I have to say, it's also one of mine. So if people are not aligned on the bottom line result that we need to be accomplishing for our clients, for the growth of the company, to make sure that we're having the impact that we want to have in the world, where, you know, that's almost getting into being bureaucratic. And the word bureaucratic around strategic coach is a four letter word. So it's key that people stay focused on the front stage and not get too caught up in the backstage. So as I go through Dan's examples, which I also share, I'd like you to think about what are the things that drive you crazy. Now, one of the challenges here is in our exercise, we have it down to four. You may have a longer list. One of the things that drives me crazy in general is people not striving or only paying lip service to things. People who are not engaged and committed. I'm like, why are you in my company? Why are you even on my part of the planet? (laughs) I get very emphatic about what drives you crazy. I was talking about this in a workshop recently. You know, it's interesting. The things that drive people crazy, actually, the way they talk, it sounds like they would engage in violence. <laughs> it's like, I want to poke my eyes out or someone else's. You know, <laughs> they get really upset about these kind of things. So, you know, again, that's one of mine, people not being really committed. Again, not knowing what's happening, especially if it's something's not happening. So no information is, in fact, information and people not recognizing that. People not taking initiative or looking out for one another. If you can see a train wreck coming and you don't speak up, then it's also on you. You are part of the problem. You are not part of the solution. That's something that kind of breaks a rule. So again, these things that drive you crazy are almost triggers. They're things that set you off. And if you've done different types of profiles, you might be self-aware. But there's also just teamwork triggers, like what are the things that drive you crazy that you see prevent projects from moving ahead, that prevent you as a company from fulfilling your purpose and your mission? What are the things that just drive you nuts? We had one team member who's clearly no longer here. And Dan had a great way of describing, he said, you know, in a parking lot, they've got the light standards and there's pools of light shining around the parking lot. This woman would find all the dark spots around the lights. (laughs) She would just never come out of the shadows. So people kind of assumed that she was being productive. The truth is, though, that you just never really knew. Now, finally, it did come to light, but it was a lot longer. It took longer than we thought because she was quite strategic about never doing that. That would be something else that doesn't work and that drives us crazy. So again, I'm sure you're actually going to have a long list and shortening it to a few key ones to communicate will be key. But the other point here is you want to be really clear with people. You want to set your team up for success. You want to set your colleagues up for success. And let them know what is true about you. How can they not drive you crazy? Otherwise, when Dan and I were talking about it, he said, you know, this is like a secret conversation people have with themselves. And secret conversations have no place in teamwork. If you want to be really successful as a team member, as a team leader, as an entrepreneur, you need to let people know. You need to be really, really clear on how they can win with you and how they can not fail. So what are your tripwires? What are your triggers? Figure them out and communicate them. Now, the specific examples that Dan was coaching with his great colleague, Melissa, was that he gave her this list, all the ways she could win and be successful with him, and also the way that she could really tick him off before they actually engaged in working together. And it's never happened. Their teamwork for the last four or five years has been seamless. Their communication is fast. It's efficient. The results keep getting better. They're 120% of plan on what they're working on together. It's fabulous. And she loves knowing how not to trigger Dan, how not to drive him crazy. And as a result, their teamwork is seamless. So if seamless teamwork is something that's important to you, you don't like the drama, you don't like the emotional upset, you would prefer to have it be calm, cool, and collected. Knowing what drives you crazy, having other people articulate what drives them crazy is a brilliant exercise to do. And if you're really 
brave, you can ask your clients, <laughs> what do you do? What would drive them crazy if you did it? You can ask your spouse. You could even ask your kids. That would take enormous amount of courage. But you can ask other people, how can you win with them? And what do you need to not do? What would prevent the teamwork or relationship growth with them? It's kind of a fun concept to take into other areas of your life. But first of all, start with the people close by around you at work and figure out for yourself what drives you crazy. Communicate that. Have them do the same with you. And I think you'll find it's a very powerful, productive conversation for even better teamwork. Any questions or comments, please let me know at questions at strategiccoach.com. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, here's to your team success. Hi, Shannon here. And thank you very much for listening. If you like what you heard today, please take a moment to rate the Team Success Podcast on iTunes, and we'd love it if you'd share the podcast with anyone else who could benefit. If you're interested in learning more about the Strategic Coach Program for Entrepreneurs, visit us at strategiccoach.com or the Strategic Coach channel on YouTube. For free downloads and more team success strategies, visit teamsuccesshandbook.com. Mm-hmm.